krishna friends very happy to be back so we had a little bit of a lengthy episode about bishma and i think uh, seeing bishma's <laughs> status it <laughs> life span yeah yeah the, somebody with such a long life span so the, the episode was a bit long i hope the listeners didn't mind please tell us what do you think about the duration we will try to accommodate uh, your request as much as possible so now we go from text 13 till text 19 where we just see the martial music being conducted there is not much of a philosophical point there is one big philosophical point which we shall take so text 13 goes like this text 13 first chapter of bhagavad gita तत शंखाश्चर्य पणवानक गो मुखा सहसैव्याभ्यन्यंत स शब्दस्तु मुलोभवत आफ्टर दैट आफ्टर दैट मीन्स आफ्टर भीष्मदेव ब्लू हिज कॉन्शल आफ्टर दैट द कॉन्शल ड्रम्स ब्यूगल्स ट्रम्पेट्स एंड हॉर्न्स वेर ऑल सडनली साउंडेड एंड द कंबाइंड साउंड वॉज टू मिल्चुअस तत श्वेतेर्युक्त महती स्यंद ने स्थित माधव पांडव दिव्यो शंखो प्रदत्मतु ऑन द अदर साइड बोथ लॉर्ड कृष्णा एंड अर्जुन स्टेशन ऑन ए ग्रेट चैरियट ड्रॉन बाय व्हाइट हॉर्सेस साउंडेड देयर ट्रांसेंडेंटल कॉन्शल्स सो द कॉन्शल प्लोन बाय भीष्मदेव एंड द कॉन्शल्स ब्लोन बाय कृष्णा एंड अर्जुन very very clearly they are described in different ways the one in the hands of bishmadev is said to be tumultuous sound making just a loud sound generator but in the hands of krishna and arjun it is transcendental divyam shankham so is there any significance in that yes the sounding of the divya shankha transcendental conscious indicates there is no hope of victory for the other side jayastu pandu putranam yesham pakshe janardanah so in one sense the gita is telling the reader that uh, hey friend look at this the conscious are just loud sound making here they are transcendental where there is krishna lakshmi devi the goddess of fortune who is like the symbol of victory she also is there so victory and fortune are on arjuna's side the chariot which on which both the friends were seated uh, the story goes that they were the chariot was given by agni dev to arjun and it was a dig vijay chariot dig means the directions and vijay means able to conquer so wherever it was drawn any part of the world this chariot will always be victorious so in one sense uh, krishna and his devotee arjun they are equal like sometimes we say how can god and the living entity be equal here is a hint they are on the same platform madhava pandava blowing their conscience but this is not a ordinary thing arjuna as krishna's associate is equally powerful hmm. and the reasoning is given nobody can be a close friend or a relation of krishna without being very very advanced like fire can mix with fire water can mix with water similarly unless somebody is transcendentally advanced they cannot mix with krishna so krishna brings his own paraphernalia with him i have a very mundane kind of example so this was my college days or maybe pre college days and for the first time a world table tennis championship was organized in delhi at that time scandinavia was quite a powerful nation in table tennis so the danish team the dutch team they came and they had a frightening experience of india's water so it was the summer season <laughs> so 
they brought 700 liters of water with them <laughs> for the entire 14 day or 15 day period and of course that time i was not reading bhagavad gita now when i heard that when krishna descends he brings his own paraphernalia with him his own relations his own opulence his own power prowess potency everything so i was thinking just like these people they are in india but they don't even drink even indian water they 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 brought whatever they want with them similarly krishna brings whatever he wants with them and anything like here proper is giving the understanding that if you see something is on equal footing with krishna like krishna and arjuna on same chariot blowing sim- similar conch shells but they are both described as divyam transcendent anything you would like to share on this um not exactly you have covered it probably we can go ahead okay so then the the list of kongshels now continues text 15 panchajanyam rishi kesho devadattam dananjaya pandram dadmo mahashankam bhima karma viko daraha translation lord krishna blew his kongshel called panchajanya arjun blew his the devadatta and bhima the voracious eater and performer of herculean tasks blew his terrific kongshel called poundra so here krishna's names are kind of that importance about krishna's name called rishikesh rishika means our sense organs and rishikesh is the lord the proprietor or the controller of the senses so it's a bit of a technical point which proper explains here living beings are considered to be part of god so the part of the living entity are also part of god's uh senses i'll give a simple example like a collector of a province has a bungalow has a vehicle so the the collector is the temporary proprietor of this government property so right now the collector has the decision to take his vehicle here there whatever but he cannot sell his bungalow right hmm, correct his, he cannot sell his car cannot sell his jeep so in one sense the jeep or the bungalow is part of the property of the collector but the collector as well as his property is property of the government and the government has hundreds such bungalows and hundreds of such officers and tens of hundreds of such vehicles and servants and everything a very basic mundane example so this is how philosophically the gita tells us that krishna is actually the owner and controller of everything now here in india we have a different way of seeing spirituality where the impersonal aspect of god is stressed over the personal aspect so according to the impersonal theory the sense of the living entities are unimportant because they are they are nothing they are there for some time and then they vanish so becoming senseless as you become mukta or moksha prapti that is the goal it's like when you are pure you don't have senses now you are impure hmm. so you have some senses and when with tapasya knowledge charity and what not full spirituality and your end point is no senses again <laughs> now there are people who adhere to this understanding and uh, they are all great tapasvis and gyanis in their own right but prabhupad brings up a small point here how can you account for the lord's senses then why he has ears why he has a tongue why he sings dances and uh, does all kind of sensual activities 
That means Krishna's senses are actually eternal. Our senses give us problems because we don't use them in Krishna's service properly. How are my eyes, my ears and my nose, how is it being directed? Right now if I say, like, like it's so easy to say that God made me do it. It is murder, theft, any immoral act, God made me do it. Oh, good. So if you say that uh, like a soldier is given a AK-47, so this is given to me by the army and I can use it to kill, right? No, you can't use it to kill anybody and everybody. Every single bullet which you fire when there is no order, you will be court martial for that. Correct. So this is such a pivotally important principle that the senses are given for a particular activity. It's like the army. Right now, if you go to army barracks and if you say, why don't you shoot? Hey, there are no orders, man. And when the orders are given, fire. After some time, if the enemy fire becomes acute, fire at will. Keep on firing. Keep on firing. And the same walkie-talkie may relay, cease fire. Cease fire. And that moment is noted. <laughs> 503, cease fire orders were given. And why did you fire at 5.05 p.m.? Give an explanation. Whether you received it, or you didn't receive it, or what. So, so much of care is taken for just a mundane military in just one country. This is how we can understand that uh, the senses have to be used and uh, according to the dictation of the controller of the senses. So, I'll just name one point and then you can elaborate on that if you have anything. So, Krishna's names are given. Actually, Krishna doesn't have a name like you and me have a name. In fact, we don't have a name. We just have a label. <laughs> Somebody is Amar. That doesn't mean he's Amar. Somebody is Ashok. But he's lamenting. He said, hey, your name is Ashok and why are you lamenting? <laughs> well, her name is Lakshmi, but she's a housemaid somewhere. So this is this material world. But when Krishna is called Devaki Nandan, oh, because he accepted Devaki as his mother, Yashoda Nandan. His childhood pastimes were given to Yashoda, Parth Sarthi, because he is a charioteer of his friend Parth. Similarly, Rishikesh means the inner secret meaning is he is now giving direction to Arjun on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Wait, not yet. <laughs> Arjuna has not fulfilled his role as a disciple yet. So we will be meeting Arjuna the disciple in 2.7 later second chapter right now at least the significance of krishna's name is to be understood by our audience so friends if this fundamental concept is clear that krishna is always in control but he directs his control according to the uh, receptive capacity of the living being for somebody who doesn't want to cooperate krishna doesn't force cooperation like the like the government doesn't force you to take a particular job. But if you behave in an antisocial way, they may take away your whatever freedom Correct. which was available. They may take away that also. Yes, Prabhu. Anything else? No, I mean, I'm just uh, munching on two very beautiful points that you highlighted. One was about the names and the tags. Never thought like that. Actually, only Krishna has names. We have got labels. As you said, Ashoka doesn't mean it doesn't have Shoka. You know, he laments a very beautiful point. And that too, you know, we are given these tags after a few days of, of the, our birth. When we are born, we don't have any label also. That was a very beautiful point. And second point is about this whole, uh, how Krishna is actually the control of our senses. And you give a wonderful example of how military, you know, uh, no soldier can fire a bullet. He's accounted for that. And similarly, we are accounted how to use it. So you made a point that how, according to Bhagavad Gita's wisdom, Krishna is a controller, controller of everything that we have. And that's why he is mentioned as Rishikesha, the master of the senses. So yes, yes, Roshi, uh, we can go ahead. Uh, yeah, so then, 
other warriors who are having their beautiful as well as their their see their uh, previously i don't think today any soldier calls his ak47 as a vidyu lata or uh, something like that <laughs> but <laughs> every bow arrow would be having name oh, so yeah, text also... 16 and 18 yudhishthir blue is kongshal anant vijay nakul sadev sughosh mani pushpak the king of kashi he also blew the great fighter shikhandi shikhandi by the way is amba reincarnated as a male and will be playing a role in bishma deva's uh, defeat then drishtadyumna virat satyaki drupad the sons of draupadi and others such as the mighty armed son of subhadra here comes our abhimanyu they all blew their respective conscials and now 19 here is something very significant the blowing of these different conscials became uproarious it's like pa 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 and so much so much vibrating both in the sky and on the earth it shattered the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra very significant point the noise made by kaurava party is described as very loud tumultuous but the sound made by the conscials of the pandava party it is described as shattering the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra why it should be like that because we saw one party has material sound the other has spiritual sound mm. and propat gives a very significant answer here the pandavas were less in number not very prepared for fight but they had their confidence in lord krishna so this is the resounding message in the ramayana mahabharat puranic literature one who takes shelter of the supreme lord has nothing to fear even in the midst of the greatest calamity so this confidence which propa describes here is called sharanagati it has uh, the components that like a small child uh propa talks of a story he was with his son two and a half years old and uh, the tram conductor said give me your fare so propa's son said i don't have any money i don't have any money and he said oh you don't have any money get down immediately the son pointed to his father and said my father's here you cannot ask me to get down such a simple everyday episode and propa compares that with a person taking shelter of god that maya you can't do anything to me my father's here so if anyone approaches krishna the guarantee is through the gita and the mahabharat if you have approached krishna even the greatest fear will not agitate you mm-hmm. like today how many books how many therapies how many tips how to get rid of fear how to get rid of fear but here is a simple thing for a devotee you can't do anything to me maya krishna is here like the sun telling my father is here you cannot challenge me very simple and very sublime at the same time i mean nothing for me to add here i was just kind of wondering that today is the whole economy the whole uh the environment is charged with fear everything is sold on the basis of fear and here oh, right yeah. in the very introductory pages of bhagavad gita uh you know we're just kind of setting the scene uh such a profound message is given which you just spoke about you know just like a son having the faith the father will protect and he's fearless yeah. so the the whole world everyone is so much perturbed by this fear you know what calamity what crisis would happen here and there people are worried about it and we are not yet yeah, even start the philosophical discussion right in the beginning of bhagavad gita the solution yeah. to the world's greatest problem today that people have is mentioned in such a simple word and uh, propa says well pandavas had nothing to be fear about because they had taken shelter of the supreme lord and you made a very beautiful point 
putting that how the sun takes shelter of father he has nothing to fear and it's an everyday experience we all have it as only we can relate it our everyday experience with our eternal father very very uh, nice report thank you thank you so much prabhuji for that so that's all for today we'll again meet next time where we will be seeing uh arjuna speaking now he has he has come to the understanding that uh fighting is about to begin he has not surrendered yet he has not started to fight yet in fact this is the beginning of the spiraling downwards into such despair so that's like the mud and through that later the lotus of the philosophy will be growing so please stay tuned we meet till we meet again next time thank you all for listening hari krishna hari krishna thank you everyone